All right, for this screencast, I'm going to do a example Newton Raphson method. Um, it's actually very, very simple to code. All you need is this iterative method here. I have Sakai open. I need x of i plus 1 equals x of i, what I'm going to call x0, is f sorry, minus f of x0 divided by f prime of x0. Okay, and I'm going to put this in a while loop. And I'm going to iterate on that. I need to step my state. And that's it. So there's the equation here. Here's the method. So now let's hit open here and let's fill out the code. So how long do we want to iterate? Let's say we want to iterate until f of x0, the absolute value, is less than 1e negative 2. Okay? So that means we need to initialize everything. My, I'm going to say my initial condition is something. But for, before we do that, let's make our function header. Let's also make our function f, so out equals f in. And what function do we want to find a zero for? Let's say out equals in squared minus one. So we know that x equals one leads to y equals zero, right? So let's say x is, let's have our initial condition be 0 0.1. So we're just to the right of the minimum and it should push us towards x equals one. All right, then we need to evaluate um, our function, but actually we evaluate that here because we already have f. Um, so we only need one more thing actually. We just need um, function out equals f prime of in. Out equals what? It's two times in, right? I just took the first derivative of this and that's it. So I'm going to come over here, come over here, and then at the end of the day I'm actually going to have x0 be an output so that when I type in Newton Raphson, it should just spit out. Hmm. So it didn't like didn't like this. Okay, so it looks like when it ran, let's put this in debug mode and see what's happening, because this should be it. So I'm gonna go in and in is 0 0.1 and out is negative 0 0.99 oh, okay so I'm sorry so let's exit debug mode so it actually turns out we need to loop while this is greater than 1e negative 2 okay so now we're gonna go through this again and I'm actually gonna output every iteration there we go. So there are my iterations. So my first iteration, so I went from 0 0.1 to 5 to 2 to 1.5 to 1.08 to 1.003 to, and then the answer was 1.003. So I could make my threshold smaller, say 1e6, hit play, and now suddenly I have a ton more iterations. Here, and actually let's do this. Let's, let's throw in a clear and a CLC here so we can see better. So let's see what happened. We went 5.05. So let's see, it looks like we iterated maybe three more times. Let's do this. Let's add iter equals one. Iter equals iter plus one. And actually let's do, let's make this zero. And then rather than outputting x1, let's just output iter. So let's see, we iterated for seven times. Let's do 1e10. Let's hit play. It looks like seven is our limit. So if we do say 1e1, that's five iterations. Two is five iterations. Three, six iterations, and then that's it. Once you hit seven iterations, you found it. Now if we make our initial condition negative 0.01, notice that our answer now is negative one because that initial condition pushed us to the left, okay? Now watch what happens if I say, re put a semicolon here iter equals iter plus one I get rid of this and I hit play notice that 
when I'm running, my initial condition was 0.1, but then it went to 5. Watch what happens if I make my initial condition 0.01. Look at my look at my step. I went from 0 0.01 to 50, and that's because f prime is very shallow. So if I add an alpha parameter, I say alpha equals 0 0.1, and I instead augment this to say alpha times f of that, and then I run this. Notice now that yes, I iterated a ton more times, but I didn't go to 50. I went to 5. So I could probably I could play with this parameter a little bit and I could probably run into a situation where you know I get I get better results. See, I'm still not hitting 50, I'm hitting 10. Let's try 0 0.5. I, I'll probably go out to 25. You see, I went out to 25 instead of 50. So there's that alpha parameter that kind of plays with that, right? Now there's one more thing that I want to do. Say that say I want to minimize, I'm going to set this back to 0.1, say I want to minimize f instead. Well, what I do is instead I want to find when f prime of x0 is equal to 0 and I'm going to set my initial condition equal to 5. So I want to find the minimum. So instead of x1 equals x0 minus alpha times f of x0 and f prime, I want f prime of x0 divided by f double prime, okay? And then I come down here, and that means I need function out equals f double prime of in. Out equals what? What's the second derivative? It's just 2. So now when I hit play, look at that. The answer went right to 0 in the first iteration, actually. That's very impressive. Um, it's probably because the function is quadratic. Let's say, let's try 10. Same thing, wow, in first iteration it went there. Let's do a more complicated function. Let's say out equals out to the third. That means that this is three in squared, and that means that this is three, this is six times in, right? So now let me hit play. I should still get zero. See, I do, I get 0 0.0012, but I slowly get there. And then if I want to say find the zeros, again, I change this to f of x0, f of x0, f prime, and this should find the zeros, which is at x equals 1, because when x equals 1, out equals 0. So again, this function here finds the zero. If I do, if I comment this out and I set x1 equals x0 minus alpha times f prime of x0 divided by f double prime x0, this finds the minimum. All right, good luck.